the fifth harvest city I've been to, I only managed to get one box. I'm telling you, there's no more sales or masks left anywhere already. And the pharmacist has no idea when the new stocks are coming in because of the global demand. <sighs> I'm here, waiting for one hour already. Where are you? Good morning, sir. I'm Senior Staff Sergeant Xiao Wei. How can I help you? Good morning, sir. I want to make a police report. I was supposed to collect 500 cartons of disposable surgical masks from the seller, but he didn't show up, and now I cannot even contact him. The worst part is that I already pay him hundred seventy-five thousand dollars in cash as deposit. Mr. Lu, why did you need to buy five hundred cartons of disposable surgical masks? My company supplies industrial and consumer safety equipments. In the last few weeks, there has been an increased demand for disposable surgical masks because of COVID nineteen. So to meet the demand. My company need to find an additional supply source. How did you find this particular seller? I was using this e-commerce platform and found this guy named Lester Wong. Mm. He said he could sell me five hundred cartons of disposable surgical masks for four hundred thousand dollars. So we exchanged the number and we met yesterday. So you met Lester Wong face to face? Yes. Can you please describe how your meeting with him went yesterday? Lester. How come I didn't bring the mask? I thought I was getting them today. Do you have the payment? Yes, as agreed. Hundred and seventy-five k in cash, then another two hundred twenty-five k to internet bank transfer, right? Yes. I have the cash. What about your mask? Okay, there's a slight delay due to high demand, but don't worry. Your mask is here already. They are at the customs. Ah, uh, how about you follow me to the supplier's warehouse tomorrow? Let's say around eight a.m. Are you sure? The mask will be there. Definitely, but I need to pay the supplier the deposit first, so the hundred and seventy-five k should do it. It's okay if you're not willing to put the deposit, but it's a risk that you must be willing to take. Because if some other buyer put the deposit first and there's no mask tomorrow, you cannot blame me. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I think I want to see some identification first. Okay. This one, okay? You don't mind I take a photo? Go ahead. Okay. Pause it. Okay. So I see you tomorrow at eight a.m. Ah. Eh? What about the receipt? Oh, I uh, forget to bring the receipt book. How about this? Since we are meeting tomorrow, uh, how about I give you the receipt with the full amount? No issues, right? Fine. Then I want to take a photo of us. Why? It's some form of guarantee. If not, I want my deposit back. Oh, okay. Uh, let's take a selfie. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow, 8 a.m. Okay, tomorrow, 8 a.m. That's when I realized that Lester didn't actually show me his driving license. Lester Wong. Oh.
so at 8 o'clock this morning, I went out to the address Lester sent me. It was at a pharmacy near Supplier's Warehouse, but he didn't show up. I tried calling him and messaging him, but there was no reply. Okay. Can you please share with me the Lester Wong's phone number, as well as the pictures you took of his cousin and the driving license that he showed you? Okay. Did he also share with you the bank account number you were supposed to deposit the money to? Yes. Okay, I'll need that as well. Okay, this I took the photo yesterday. This is the rhyme license. This is Les Wong. Shana, yo, any updates? Sir, I've sent the phone number that Mr. Lo gave us to the telcos, but they haven't gotten back to us yet. I screened the bank account number that Mr. Lo was supposed to transfer the payment to. Hmm. It belongs to a Felicia Ho. Is she in our database? No, neither are Lester Wong or Chong Si Bing. But since Chong has a Malaysian driver's license, we've contacted ICA and they told us that he left the country six months ago. Maybe the suspect made up the name Lester Wong to cheat Mr. Lo without ever intending to deliver the marks and hid his identity behind all these proxies. Felicia Ho looks like our best lead though. Let's pay her a visit. I know Chong Si Bing. He's my ex-boyfriend. He used to live here when he was in Singapore, but now he's gone back to Malaysia. But I don't know anyone named Mr. Lo. Thanks, Ms. Ong. So do you have any idea who might know your bank account number? My boyfriend, Daryl, um, he asked for my bank account number, said he wanted to help me do some investment with my money. Where is Daryl now? Running some errands, but he should be back soon. Does he know your ex-boyfriend, Chong? No, they have never even met each other. And do you know uh, Lester Wong? Lester Wong? No. Do you recognize anyone in this photo? That's my boyfriend, Daryl. So this is Daryl. What's his surname? Chong? Why? That's Daryl. Shayna, bring her to the room. You're with me. I'm Senior Investigation Officer Adha. Please state your name. Daryl Chong. Daryl Chong, you're under arrest for cheating. Cuff him. No, no, you make a mistake. I'm a victim. sell Mr. Lo 500 cartons of disposable surgical masks for $400,000. Yes. Why do you introduce yourself as Lester Wong? Because the company that I work for doesn't allow their employees to moonlight. So I use a fake name, harder for my boss to find out I'm doing a side business. Did you meet Mr. Lo yesterday on the 13th of February 2020 and receive $175,000 from him? Yes, it was the deposit for the mask. You were supposed to meet Mr. Lo again today, 14th February at 8am, to receive the masks. But you didn't turn up, and when he tried to contact you, you didn't respond. Why? Okay, this one I can explain. There was a problem with my phone. I couldn't receive Mr. Lo's phone calls or messages, and I lost all my contacts, so I couldn't contact him as well. Okay, but that still doesn't explain why you didn't show up this morning at 8am to meet Mr. Lo as agreed. Because I used the money to pay my supplier, this Indonesian guy called James. I couldn't contact him also because I lost all my contact. That's why I didn't dare to show up. But... Okay. How did you contact James in the first place? Through an e-commerce app. Then why didn't you just use the same e-commerce app to contact James again? James deleted his post. And without his post, I couldn't find his profile. Maybe he purposely deleted his post so that I cannot find him. I'm the one who got cheated of $175,000, you know. I'm a victim too. When you met Mr. Lo yesterday, you showed him Chong Si Bing's driving license instead of your own. Why? I lost my IC, but I found Chong Si Bing's driving license at my girlfriend's place. So I used his driving license first until I replaced my IC. You also told Mr. Lo to transfer the money directly into your girlfriend's bank account, Miss Felicia Ho, instead of your own. Why? Her account has a higher bank interest rate. When we arrested you, you were wearing a gold necklace, a gold watch and a gold bracelet. Items you were not wearing when you met Mr. Lo yesterday. Where did you get them from? 
they were gifts given by my client for the good service I provided when their mother passed away. I work as a cremation service coordinator. What's your client's name? Couldn't remember. I agreed to wash it already. Daryl's got an answer for everything. He claims he never intended to cheat Mr. Lowe. So what's his story? He claims that he's just an innocent middleman and he was carrying out a legitimate business deal with an Indonesian supplier named James. And he claims that he paid James $175,000 from Mr. Lowe. So how come he didn't show up to collect the mask? According to him, he couldn't contact James or Mr. Lowe because he lost all the contacts in his phone. And he couldn't respond to Mr. Lowe because he didn't receive any calls or messages from him. Well, Tech Forensics got back with the analysis of Daryl's phone. Seems he was telling the truth about that. There were no calls or messages from Mr. Lowe and his contacts list was gone. We did manage to find three leads from his phone. On the nights of the 12th and 13th of February, Daryl was messaging someone. We do not know who since his contacts list is gone. But both messages pertain to the deal with Mr. Lowe. But if you look at the profile picture, there's a logo. Which is Daryl's workplace, so this person could be his co-worker. What's the second lead? More jewellery. When I asked Daryl about the gold ring, gold necklace and gold watch he was wearing, he claims they were gifts from a client whose name he can't remember, but he's probably lying. In the meantime, I've sent both of these numbers to the telcos for screening. What's the third lead? A Google map search of Serangoon Road. This area is not near Daryl's workplace or Felicia's flat. So why would he go there unless he had a specific reason? Felicia Ho said she's not involved in Daryl's scheme and we spoke to her. We need concrete proof of Daryl's intent to cheat Mr. Lowe and tie him to the $175,000. Yo, tomorrow go down to his workplace and speak to his boss. Yes, sir. Shayna, you and I will go down to Serangoon Road. Yes, sir. Have you sent me the pictures already? Yes. Thank you. We'll need to canvas the jewellery shops, see if anyone remembers Daryl coming to buy any jewellery recently. Hi, Mr. Chua. I'm Investigation Officer Yo. I would like to ask you some questions regarding Daryl. Oh yes, you've been working here for the last five years. Can you help me to check if this phone number belongs to any of your employees? Sure, you just give me a few minutes. Thank you. Hi, ma'am. My name is SIO Adha. I'm currently conducting an investigation. Have you seen this man recently? No. Hi, I'm from the police. I'm Ayo Shena. Have you seen this man before? No. Hi, ma'am. My name is SIO Adha. I'm currently mm -hmm. conducting an investigation. Have you seen this man recently? Yes. Oh, yes. I found the employee that has this number. Her name is Ang Kim Lei, and she's good friends with Daryl. Do you have her address? Oh, yes. It's here. This guy came down a few days ago. 39,000. I remember him because he paid in cash. Plus his hair colour. Do you remember selling him any jewellery like these? Oh, yes. See that those rings on the display case? I sold him the same exact ones, but in different size. How about these? Ah, oh, yes. They're all from here. I can show you the receipt of the jewellery. Yeah, that'll be good. Can I also get the footage from your CCTV? Oh, our CCTV is spoiled. Do you remember if anyone was with him? Um, I really can't say for sure, but uh, he had a friend with him. A woman. Can you describe her? Uh, she was older than him. Um, maybe in her 30s. Nice. Her phone number belongs to Ang Kim Lee. She's Daryl Chong's co-worker and she's in her 30s. According to the boss, they are pretty close, but she has no prior records. We also found a jewellery store at Seragman Road, where Daryl bought all his jewellery. This is the receipt. Now, he was there just two days ago with a woman described to be in her 30s, so that could be Ang Kim Lee. I'll speak to Daryl again and see what he says. Now, Kim Lee may have been involved in Daryl's scheme, so we'll have to interview her as well. You said that the gold ring, gold necklace, and gold watch we were wearing were gifts from a client. Yes. Really? Because we have proof that you bought the jewellery and watch from Serangoon Road just two days ago. That's because 
before the client migrated to Australia. He gave me the money to buy them. That's what I meant when I said the jewelry and the gold watch was a gift. Because the money came from the client. Who is Aung Kim Lee? She's my god sister. You bought jewelry for your god sister worth $39,000. Why? What's wrong? Part of the money came from the client. Part of it was my saving. Nothing wrong with that, right? And then you also gave her $30,000? I didn't give her. I asked her to hold on to it. Hold on to it for what? Deposit? Yes. But you said you had already given the $175,000 that Mr. Lowe gave you as a deposit to your supplier, James. It was not for James. It was for another supplier. Hey, stop wasting our time. We already know the truth. Miss Sung, do you know about Daryl Chong's deal to sell disposable surgical masks? A bit. Daryl told me he had a new side job that would earn him a lot of commission. <sighs> After he was done, he came over here with the money. Yeah, let me call. When was this? 13 February. And then what happened after? After he came, then he counted the money. 30,000. Help me pay the supplier. He passed me 30,000 and told me to hold on to it. He says it's to pay his suppliers. What do you do after you stop counting the money? Oh, the three of us went to Serangoon Road. He bought me a gold ring and a gold bangle. Three of us? Mm -hmm. Who was the third person? With his girlfriend, Shu Fong. Uh, I can't really say for sure, but I think he had a friend with him. A woman? Can you describe her? She was older than him. Uh, sure. Maybe in her 30s? Why, why you can choose some more. These two hands, they just don't look like they belong to the same person, you know? Wait. The feet. Do you remember of anyone else or something? Yeah. Now that you mention, he was with another nice woman, time. maybe in her 20s. Nice. And this? Beautiful. The telcos also got back. They confirmed that Ang Kim Lee is the owner of the number. The other number belongs to a Ho Shu Fong. She's a 23-year-old Chinese female with no prior records. The woman at the jewelry store did say that another woman in her 20s was there of Daryl that day. So that could be Ho Shu Fong. Shana, talk to her. Yo, go and interview Ang Kim Lee. But do both interviews simultaneously so the women can't tip each other off. Just in case they're in cahoots. Yes, yes sir. sir. So Shu Fong, then what happened next? So that day, after Daryl counted the money at Kim Lee's flat, I think it's not safe to carry as much money around you know, all over the place. So he passed me $106,000 and he asked me to keep for his yeah, side business. You. How about you keep it for me? I mean, he trusts me because I'm his girlfriend after all. And after that, we went to Serangoon Road. So what did you all do at Serangoon Road? We went to shop for some jewellery. So he bought me some gold earrings and also a gold ring. And who else was with you? Kim Lee. Can you show me the $30,000 and jewellery he bought for you? Yeah, sure. Please show me the gold ring, gold earrings and $106,000. Okay, this is the rings and the gold earring. And the cash is in the back here. You know what's interesting? $39,000 for jewellery. $30,000 to Ang Kim Lee. Plus the $106,000 we found in Ho Shu Fong's house. Yes. She claims that she's your girlfriend. She's my another girlfriend. All this adds up to $175,000, the same exact amount that Mr. Lo gave you as a deposit. So what do you have to say for yourself? I don't know what you're talking about. There was no mass. There was no Indonesian supplier named James. You made everything up. You never intended to sell Mr. Lo anything. You preyed on people's fears to cheat them. And then you dragged Ang Kim Lee, Ho Shu Fong and Felicia Ho into this scheme. No, no, no. It's all my idea. They had nothing to do with the scam. So you admit, you did it. Daryl Chong Zhiyong was convicted of cheating and sentenced to three years and two months imprisonment. In the case you have just seen, more than $170,000 was cheated from the victim in a single transaction. Officers from the Amokyo Police Division worked tirelessly on the available leads and arrested Daryl Chong within four hours of the reported crime. The police would like to advise members of the public to exercise caution when making purchases online. To avoid becoming a victim of online purchase scams, here are some tips. Check with seller's ratings and reviews before committing to a transaction. Where possible, insist on cash on delivery or use the platform's secure payment option. 
Be wary of deals that are way below the market price. They may be disguised as limited time only or flash deals. Dear friends, since December 2020, the police observed a new variant of banking-related phishing scams where scammers would impersonate as government officials. Victims would receive phone calls or messages from scammers pretending to be from government agencies like the Singapore Police Force or the Ministry of Manpower. These scammers would ask for internet banking login details, IC numbers or one-time passwords, claiming that there were problems with the victim's bank accounts. Victims would later realise they had been scammed when they discovered unauthorised transactions were made from their accounts. To avoid becoming a victim of such scams, here are some tips. Don't panic. No government agency or bank will ask for personal or bank details over the phone. Call a friend or relative before you act. Don't believe. Scammers may use caller ID spoofing technology to display a different number. Don't give. Never give out your personal or banking details, including your OTP, to anyone. For additional protection, download Scam Shield from the Apple Store. It will help to filter scam calls and messages and prevent you from being the target of scams. Let's take active steps to protect ourselves and our loved ones and be a scam-wise community. If you need advice, please call our anti-scam helpline at 1-800-722-6688 or go to www.scamalert.sg. We've come to the end of this season of Crime Watch. I'm DSP Jonathan Nao Yong. Until next time, do your part to prevent, deter and detect crime. 